It's a honeycomb. It can't be. It's too big. About a hundred million years ago, bees were more like wasps. Eating other insects rather than nectar and pollen. It's unclear exactly when bees decided to become vegetarians, but considering the choice between eating a fly and some delicious sweet tasting nectar from a cherry tree in full bloom, it seems like a good decision. This week on The Good Life, we look at the honeybee and the benefits of the sweet, viscous food it provides. Scientists believe that bees are responsible for the rich flower diversity we enjoy today. And so it was fitting to journey to the breadbasket parish of St. Elizabeth to talk to renowned bee farmer Elton Colley. The bee is very important to life itself. The bee supports about 60% of the food production. So without the bee, we probably would not exist. The bee also produces honey, the main thing, honey, which is a health food. Honey is really the nectar that they take from the flower. There are different set of bees in the colony. You have the worker who collects nectar. You have the nurse bee, that is a newly emerge bees. They do housekeeping, like keep the queen clean, feed the young ones, and they do inside work. When they are strong and mature enough, they join the, the, the workforce and they will fly out to collect pollen and nectar. Also, they, they collect resin from the trees, which are used to make the, the, the propolis. The scouts will fly out in search of flowering plants. They come back to the hive and um, communicate that information to the bees that are in the hive. Tell them what direction to fly and they will go out, fill their stomach with the nectar and fly back to the hive. While flying to the hive, that nectar that they take in their stomach is converted to honey and they take back honey to the hive, deposit it and go again and they are Thousands of bees that are doing that during the day. Our main source in St. Elizabeth, we have a lot of lagood. The lagood is the main one. The lagood is a distinctive honey. It, it has a special taste. It has a special aroma. People always go for lagood honey. If we should label the honey as lagood honey, we can ask for a premium price for it. But most farmers don't separate the lagoon honey from the multifloral. They just package everybody and sell it at one price. But the lagoon honey is exceptional. This frame, the queen lays in it. If you notice, there are some seal broods and there are some lavas. She lays in this, both sides. The top section of it, they store some honey. You refer to it as the honey arch. You know, she then store it in an arch. And as soon as these bees emerges, they stock honey in all of this. Honey has had a valued place in traditional medicine for centuries. It has a limited use in modern medicine due to the lack of scientific support. But studies have recorded some undisputed benefits. Honey, benefits, oh boy, honey has many benefits. It is referred to as nature's only natural food. When one takes honey in their system, your body uses up every part of the honey that you take in. No, no, it no go to waste. And that is the reason why it is not advisable that you take a whole heap of honey one time. Because your body cannot deal with, with it in large volume. If you have any fungal infection, whether your hair, your skin, your eyes between your toes, you apply a small coat of honey and you are good to go. When you take honey, 
it, it, it energizes you to relax the nerves. It is suggested that you, you drink a teaspoonful of honey each night just before you go to your bed. Honey is used in manufacturing. A lot of products that are on the market, honey is part of it. The health food stores do use honey in some of the products. In addition to those benefits, studies have shown that raw honey is linked to healthy weight management when substituted for sugar as a sweetener. Raw honey is said to also activate hormones that suppress the appetite. Raw honey raises levels of health-promoting antioxidants in the body, especially those that have been shown to reduce the risk of heart disease and cancer. In the process of making honey, the bee also produces other health foods. There is also the pollen. It is also a health food. It's one of the high energy food that they produce for themselves. Pollen, it's not recommended that you, you mix it into a hot drink. If you expose it to a um, high temperature, it, it, it will destroy the enzymes in the product. So it will basically be useless. You can use it on your salad. You can mix it in your fruit drink and you can eat it straight. Because of its multiple health purposes, it can be used widely. Bee pollen contains more protein than any animal source and more amino acids than an equal weight of eggs or beef. It is also in raw honey, which is known to ward off infections and provide natural allergy relief. The wax is a pro another product of the hive. They will eat back some of that honey. That's the mature bees. And there's a special gland inside of them that convert the honey to wax. That wax they use to build the combs and to build back this, build the cells and to seal it whenever they fill it with honey. When we extract the honey, we find ourselves with the extra wax. We can either sell it or use it back in the hive. The wax that is sold is often used in the hair and beauty industry as an ingredient in lip balms and natural makeup. It is used in moisturizing body bars to combat chronically dry skin, eczema, and other irritating skin conditions, and is excellent for conditioning and strengthening braids and dreadlocks. The bees produce the propolis, mainly from the resin of plants, and they mix it with some enzymes and other products. The propolis have antibiotic propensity, so it, they use it to sterilize everything inside there. Even when the bees go out and collect, they have to pass through the entrance, which is coated with propolis. It helps to clean the system. If something goes in the hive and they cannot manage to take it out, they propolize it. They use, use the propolis to seal it so it cannot contaminate anything inside there. When the bees work inside there, the honey the bee bread, the pollen, whatever they store inside there. It is not contaminated. It is clean. The only time that any product from the hive will be contaminated is after it is taken out. It depends on how you, how you process it. Not many of us have started extracting propolis, but there's also a market for propolis. There's also a market for the royal jelly, but I don't know of anybody in Jamaica that is extracting royal jelly. It's very expensive and it's very technical. There are some people who go into flavored honey, but for medicinal, I'm certain about the honey and garlic. I, I do use it myself. It's a very good remedy for cough and cold. Welcome back to The Good Life. If you are just joining us, we are exploring the benefits of honey. Let's look at the queen bee. The queen is the most important bee. She is the one who maintains the hive. She, she 
knows when to produce and how much to produce. She can lay up to 2,000 eggs per day. And that's a, lot of, that's a lot of eggs. And that is why you find there are so much workers in the hive because she's the one who lays all those eggs. She lays the drones in the drone cell when it is necessary. The more bees you have in the hive, the more efficient the hive is. So if you give them the space, they will produce and, and occupy all the space. The aim of keeping good hives is to keep it strong, especially when it's coming up to flowering time. You will have to determine how fast you want your hive to grow, you know. For example, you must know whether you want more hives or you want more honey. Now, if you want more hives, you're going to have to keep splitting those hives. If you can produce queens, you can produce queens from the hive without allowing the bees to do it. We have a few queen producers in Jamaica. I am not one of them. I use the, <laughs> the, the traditional method, the old time method, right? By setting the bees, make them queenless, put some bees together, make sure you have eggs, larva, and, and seal brood with those bees that you put down there. And they will create a queen. Seven days after you put down those bees, you will go back and you check if they are producing a queen. All the eggs, that 2,000 eggs that she lay per, per day, most, I would say two thirds or more of those eggs are fertilized. Any one of those eggs, they can convert that to a queen. Those bees, they have a special gland in them that generate the royal jelly. That's why they call them the nurse bees, because they are the ones who produce the royal jelly that they use to feed the larva and to feed the queen. And by the way, the queen only eats royal jelly, and she's fed with the royal jelly by the nurse bees. They below one of these worker cell are two, and they feed it, they stock it with royal jelly. Fill it up, they, they build it longer than the, the ordinary worker cell, and stock it, fill it with royal jelly, and seal it, and leave it there. After some days, a queen will re-emerge. With growing campaigns about health and wellness, more people are opting to use honey as the preferred sweetener. But can we satisfy this demand? There's a high demand for honey locally. We can't even think about the international market because we are not producing enough to satisfy the local demand. So therefore, we have to be focusing now and upping our production so we can meet the local demand. There are about 48,000 hive of bees in Jamaica presently. This is coming out of the Ministry of Agriculture. I think they did a survey. And we have about 30,000 um, beekeepers. Most honey producers, um, they, they dispose of their honey by June. And um, after that, the people who have some honey still purposely hoard it so that they can ask for extremely high price. But from January to June, honey, this price is sort of stable. Though there is potential and hope for growth for the bee industry in Jamaica, Mr. Colley outlines some hard facts about its current state that may hinder development. I would say at this point that beekeeping is a pretty expensive venture to go in. But the good thing about it, you can recover your investment within two years, if things are normal. To, to, bees are selling now anywhere between fifteen and $20,000 per single colony, full single colony, fifteen and 20000 You can get it cheaper, and some people are asking more, but it depends on who is selling it, because some people just get fed up and want to get out of it, so they will sell it for any price. They will sell it for cheaper than that. So if you are lucky to find someone someone like that, fine. But 
it's not only the cost of the hive. There are some other equipment that you have to buy. You have to buy a veil. A veil is running where between three and four thousand dollar per veil. Hive tool, probably about twelve hundred or there about. Um, you have a smoker running between ten and eleven thousand dollar. The hive body is sold at about one thousand five hundred dollar each. The frames are sold at a hundred and fifty dollars each. Um, foundation is two thousand or more per pound. Now, if a person sells you a hive of bees for anywhere between ten and fifteen thousand, the hive body, the frames, the foundation, that will be part of that package. Here's the hive tool, the smokers, those are additional to the fifteen thousand. The last price is about um, between one thousand two hundred to one thousand five hundred per seven fifty ml. The bulk honey is going about thirty thousand per twenty two liter, so, yeah, about five gallon. That's expensive. This type of price is as a result of the higgling. The higglers will buy the honey and they will go out there and sell it for any price. There are some people who will buy the bulk honey and keep it until these times when the honey is short. So they will go out there and sell it for some really high price. The interesting thing about it is that people are buying it. So that is the reason why the honey price is not, won't be stabilized for now. Welcome back to The Good Life. Before the break, bee farmer Elton Cawley highlighted some major concerns faced by the bee industry in Jamaica. He continues. The bee industry have been suffering for some time now. I would say about three, four years since we have been seeing a steady decline in the production of honey. If your bees are not strong, even though the plants are flowering, they will not be able to collect enough nectar to produce the honey in, in large volume. So the key is to keep your bees strong. And our, our strength has been declining over a number of years. We have been looking at several factors of the decline locally. Up to this point, we haven't come to any conclusion as to what is the cause of our problem or decline in Jamaica. There was a time we were looking at a type of insecticide that the farmers use, that they say it is neonicoticide, but they haven't come to any conclusion. We are still out there hoping for the best. We have been doing our in-house maintenance and we are dealing with whatever other challenges we are having. But outside of bee farmers who are doing what they can to save the bee industry, who else can help? The Ministry of Agriculture. Yes, they can do a lot. Firstly, there should be some regulation as to the destruction of the, the plants that generate nectar for honey production. What is happening to us in St. Elizabeth? Coal burners is playing havoc on our main honey producing plants, the lagood. They will go into an area where lagood is, and when they are finished with it, you don't see nothing. Everything is flat. That is a dangerous practice for honey production. There is still some regulation as to the, the importation of honey. I think that is still in place. I think they need to ensure that nobody bring in honey in Jamaica because without it, it's being properly screened. Honey carries some of the problems like the fall brood, for example. From an area is contaminated with fall brood, the bees will spread it within the area that they forage. 
They take it to the, to the plant on their legs. They leave the spore on the plant and bees from a healthy hive will go to that same flower, pick up the nectar along with the full brood spore and take it back to the healthy hive. Full brood, is, it destroys the hive over time. We also have pests. There is a mite and there is a hive beetle that we have in Jamaica now. But we are working on it. We are trying to see if we can counter it or, or to decrease the population of these pests and disease. Individual farmers will have to apply their own remedy. For the mite, there is a chemical that you use. Eh? But another problem with using that chemical, it can get in the honey, so you can only use it at a certain time. And they, not everybody is going to adhere by the rule. So we stand a chance of contaminating the honey. And if we run in that problem, we go, when we reach a point to export, we're going to have a problem. Predilacy is, is a problem in some of the areas. I myself have suffer, suffered a little bit of predilacy problem, but it's not widespread. We are in discussion with the apiculture unit in the ministry as to the best way to counter the predial last problem. There are some things that we, we plan to do. I cannot say it now publicly because, um, you know, for security purpose, we can't disclose. However, hopefully, we'll get on top of it. Despite evidence that much more needs to be done for the bee industry to prosper, Mr. Colley notes that he is beginning to see signs of improvement in bee season, which he finds encouraging. The main influence time start about December, January, February, March. Down to April, May, um, after that, the flooring will cut back and that's the dearth period. The dearth period is when they don't have much out there. But if it's an extreme condition where it's dry, we have to feed them full scale with either sugar or soya blend along with pollen substitute. The honey production, honey pollen propolis, all of them, they produce in large quantity from December to April. The bees are looking better at this time of the year than they have been looking in the past two, three years at this time. So we are hoping that it is a sign of a turnaround for the industry.